Yes. Colonel General Creighton's here with our passenger. Fine, send them right in. Oh, Joe, this is Miss Yilka. It's uh, not now. This How is Colonel Gallagher. How do you do? Nice to meet oh, you. Oh, Joe, you know General Creighton. Yes, hello, Dave. Nice to see you again. Joe. Congratulations on the star. I'm sorry we're late. It's all my fault. Well, I'll punish you by offering you some of my bad coffee. Come on in. I'll major. Okay. Dave, would you like some? Oh, yes. Oh, no, thanks, Joe. Miss Radney, your coffee. Please call me Ilka. Oh, all right. Thank you, Ilka. You quarters for the lady? Yes, we do. Uh, what about you, Dave? You staying? No, going back to G2. Oh. You're right. Pardon? It's bad coffee. <sighs> but it's warm. Well, I warned you. Uh, let me get your chair. Yeah. Ilka, whenever you're ready, Major Stovall will take you to your quarters. I hope I'll be able to sleep. Actually, I am terrified of flying. <laughs> well, G2 tells me you're not afraid of anything. If she is, she hides it well. Are you going to fly this mission? Uh, no, actually, I'm going to be sending um, Captain Langard. He's a much better bad weather pilot than I am. But I'll be sending my best crew and my best flight engineer, Kamansky. Joe? I'll give you the flight data now. Yes. It goes to the pilot, locked and sealed, as is. He opens it after he's airborne. Clear? Clear. She's a prime target, Joe. I want precaution taken every moment she's here. Right. Don't worry, we'll take good care of the prime target. having maintenance troubles. Well, we're handling that. As a matter of fact, this aircraft is getting special pre-flight, and we're guarding it. We have no intention of letting anything happen to our prime target. The prime target is very grateful. I'll tell you what, Sergeant Podesta, in exchange for your ironclad guarantee on that bucket of bolts, I'm prepared to put you in for a stateside transfer to do bond rallies with Dorothy Lamour. I just hate to see any airplane go up in all this weather, sir. Well, it seems we need the weather to hide this big shot resistance leader we're dropping. Well, believe me, Captain Langer, 262 is 100%. We've lost a couple real good ones lately, you know. Yeah, you just don't push it too hard, she get you there and back. Yeah, like a blind dog in a butcher shop. Good night, Sarge. A QM production. Starring Paul Burke. Also starring Frank Overton. And Chris Robinson with guest stars Gia Scala, J.D. Cannon. Tonight's episode, Prescription for a Sick Bird. boy, if you'll go back there and speak to our pretty passenger about gathering up her cloak and dagger, I'll speak to management about having your salary doubled. And if they double it, sir, two times nothing, still nothing.
You okay? Okay. There's a flight engineer and a pilot. Passengers ready, sir. Uh, Roger, Sandy. Tell her we've got like uh, 20 minutes before she jumps. Roger. 20 minutes. 20 minutes, okay. Gallagher. Yes, General, just a second. Yes, Dave. I'm in General Britt's office, Joe. He's phoned from Scotland. And I'm curious myself about the uh, weather drop. Well, they got off on time, but I haven't got any reporters yet. No maintenance malfunction. Now, wait a minute. Don't you start that. Britt wanted to know. I told you we were doing special pre-flight. Now, simmer down. It's only a question. Justified, I think. OK. Yes, sir, the recent record has been bad, but I'm handling it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I will. Sergeant, that was G2. Now he's on my back about group maintenance. He's got to know that a group can have bad luck with a... Bad luck? Bad luck, my foot. I happen to know that squadron you're responsible for. I commanded it before they put me in here. And right now, they have the worst group maintenance record in wing. You let a squadron become unglued, and it affects the morale and the efficiency of the whole base. Now, what's wrong? All I know, sir, is that the group was having problems when I transferred in. Well, I'm going to tell you the same thing I told the engineering officer. I want my airplanes flyable. Can I make myself any clearer? No, sir. Dismissed. Podesta. Here. Sir, can you see Captain Zala now, the Polish liaison officer? Yes, send him right in. Good morning, Captain. Good morning. Glad you could make it. Of course. Oh, have a seat. Thank you. Something I can do for you, sir? Yes. I was instructed to inform you that Ilka Zradna is being parachuted onto the continent this morning. Zradna? Are you sure? One of my aircraft is flying the mission. But I'm astonished. Into Poland? We don't know where. The orders were sealed not to be open until after takeoff. Even you were not told. That's correct. Well, Miss Saradna is so well known in espionage circles, she's in danger wherever she goes. And what with divided loyalties in Poland, G2 has taken every possible safety precaution. Good. Very good. Well, I'll be glad to let you know whatever I can. Would you please, Colonel? I'm still billeted in Archbury, and I shall... Colonel, I just had a call from communications. 262's in trouble. 262? That's the aircraft Miss Saradna's flying in. I'd like to excuse this, Captain. Jack, give us a light, will you? We've got to change our approach. It's not working fast enough. Gallagher's been riding my tail past the weapon. Reported a runaway prop, sir. He turned back. He didn't make the drop. Now she's on fire. All right, put me on voice. Army 262. Army 262. This is Archbury Tower. Over. Archbury Tower from 262. We're in big trouble. Fire in number one. Over. Army 262. What is your position? Over. Archbury Tower. I had to abort the jump. I, I was over the crowd's front yard. I have the channel beneath me now. We'll try and bring the passenger home. Over. 262, now this is Gallagher. You give me your exact position and hit the bailout bell. Over. 
Joe, the fire is getting worse. Chuck, bail out. Do you read me? Bail out and get the girl out. Six two, come in, come in, over, come in. It's no good, sir. She went down. Good. I am sure Ikaz Radna was going to jump over Varsa. She's much too important for anything routine. I think we prevented the major uprising. Well, resistance leaders aren't my line, Solar, but if you're pleased, I am too. Come on, help me with this, Lieutenant. Ikaz Radna was worth 10 B-17s. We destroy one, they build two. Zola, my work is the men that fly the B-17s. Now, you know there isn't a bomber in the world worth anything if the crew that flies her is afraid she's going to fall apart on them, am I right? Look, Anson. The work in some of the groups is going well enough. Uh -huh. But there is no fear in 918. Gallagher is either always afraid or never afraid. Zola, stop and think for a minute. Now, we've got him believing that his maintenance crews are sloppy. And he's worried, Zola, very worried. Before we're finished with him, they'll be dragging him away in a straitjacket. So they replace him. Zola, I can see you don't understand the Americans. Let me explain something to you. You see, they need their heroes. The, uh, well, the men depend on them like crutches. Now, the loss of Elka Zratna today is going to be a black eye for the pride of the heavies. And as we continue to drain the spirit from Gallagher in the 918th, the rest of the bomber command will dry up like a, like a dead chicken. Hanson. We could get rid of Gallagher. Yes, we got rid of Zratna. Emmer mit der Ruhr, Mr. Gelegenheit kommt. I think we both understand how important it is to make him look ridiculous, Zola. Stop worrying, will you? If there's not an explosion, I'll create one for you. Okay. Bum rap, Podesta, Skipper blaming it all on us. Maintenance, those lousy throttle jockeys pushing too hard. That's Why right. can't he lean on the pilots and the lousy flight engineers? Yeah, look at him sitting there, murderous row if I ever saw All right, drop it. Look, there. we yeah, checked every bum, rivet bum. nut and bolt in that 262. Plus the fact it was the best ship on the line to begin with. Yeah, well, a runaway prop is a maintenance oh, follow-up, and there ain't no plan. getting out of that. Sandy Kermansky was a friend of mine. Hey, Garnett, we all liked Kermansky. Yeah, yeah, sure you did. I can hear you all saying how much you like Clem Garnett. Next time I crawl into one of those slop jobs, you eight balls turn out. Oh, okay. Clem, I ain't beyond stomping you. Well, listen, let me tell you something, Thibodeau. Hey, you just meet me any place you want. All right, all right, you all right. All your all right. Don't you tell me. Look, 262 is one of my airplanes. Whatever happened to that plane is my fault. Yeah, now wait. All me. right, you want to fight somebody, you fight me, Garnett. Hey, 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 come here. Hey, come here. 
Resto, I got a message for you and your grease balls. Hey, take it easy here, French. All right, cool. Oh, come on. You stay out of here. What's the matter? Come on. Come on, man. Come on. I'm so glad. I thought we'd lost you. It must have been awful for you. And three survivors from the crew. Rodman, Booker, and Kamansky. Only three? Now, where are they? NCO Club. If you open your window, you can hear them from here. Pardon me, gentlemen. I thought I was in a non-commissioned officers club. I didn't realize this was a fight arena. Private Podesta, Private Kamansky, you'll clean this mess up. Major, this club is closed. Yes, sir. Everybody helps. Clean up and clear out. That is. He was a wonderful pilot. We were going down so fast, but he fought so hard to keep us high enough so that we could jump. He was very brave. Yes, he was. Did you know I am going to be your guest for a while? Oh? Major Kaiser, I mean Dr. Kaiser, has arranged the room for me. Oh, then, then G2 knows you're back? Yes. And uh, I reported to General Crichton, and he thinks it's too dangerous for me to go to London now. Yes. So, you must protect me. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, excuse me. Private commands, please. Uh, just a minute, Harvey. Well, I must go now. Uh, what about clothes for you? That's very thoughtful of you. But Major Stovall has sent for my things. Uh, uh, how about a cocktail before dinner? I had cocktails with your Major, Williams. Oh, I see. Well, uh, what about dinner? <laughs> I already had dinner with Colonel Bailey. <laughs> it seems the efficiency of my officers is highly commendable. Well, um, can I show you around our ammunition dump? <laughs> Fascinating, Colonel. Fascinating. All right, Harvey. Bring in Kamansky. Private Kamansky, sir. Harvey, I finished writing those letters to Hertz and Langett's family. Can you send them? Yes, sir. At ease, Kamansky. Sandy, there's something eating through this group of ours like termites. It's gotten to Podesta, it got to you, and it got to me. I can tell the Colonel what got to me, sir. 262 is the third airplane we've lost in less than three weeks to some kind of a foul-up. Not a single shot fired. Lieutenant Hertz and Captain Langer are both dead. And I felt I had the right to hit somebody. No, you didn't. But you didn't deserve to be busted in public, either. And closing that NCO club just... Penalized a lot of guys who had nothing to do with it. I want you to go out and find Podesta. Straighten this thing out with him. Then both of you come back here and straighten it out with me. Yes, sir. Kamansky! Podesta? Podesta? No, I ain't seen him. Don't know where he's at. Thanks. Podesta!
What's this? I just chased a snooper out of the armorer's room with a maintenance hanger, sir. He was trying to do something with a case of 50 caliber ammunition. What exactly, I don't know. He'd, he'd opened it. He was trying to melt the solder. He left this behind. Wait a minute. Let me see that knife again. Well, this belongs to Podesta. <laughs> Dave, sorry to get you up in the middle of the night like this. Not half as sorry as I am. Well, what's all this? Evidence. You know, you and some of the big brass have been on my back about sloppy maintenance on the 918th. Well, I don't have a maintenance problem, Dave. I'm being sabotaged. What's this? That belongs to a ground chief of mine. His name is Podesta. Came into my outfit about two weeks ago. I found that along with the rest of the stuff where he left it, next to a case of 50 caliber ammo in my armorer's room. Well, what have you done about it? I double the guard, but I'm not prepared to do much about this. You're G2, Dave. It's your job, or CICs. I'm in. Now listen, in the morning I'm flying a mission if the weather clears. Oh, I know. Colonel Gallagher, it's Major Adams, counterintelligence. Major, Colonel? how do you do? Nice to meet you. Major, have you had a report from the 918th? No, sir. It's overdue. Dave, would you stick to this problem? I am. This problem is a team of 20 saboteurs who've murdered some of our incoming people, altered their files and identification, and managed to infiltrate Bomber Command. Sounds incredible, Joe. Hmm. Well, it's happened. These agents are clever, beautifully trained and prepared, but there's one thing they don't know, and that is that we got on to them right away. How, I can't say. Right now, we're maneuvering to pin down the whole group, then... We move in. But if you knew there were saboteurs in my group, why didn't you tell me? There are other groups, Joe, not just yours. It's taken time and a lot of sweat to narrow this down. We weren't sure the 918th was involved. I'd have called you in the morning if we'd have had confirmation one way or the other. But what would you have known if I hadn't come here tonight? Well, sir, I've slipped a couple of CIC men under your base. I get daily reports. Well, that's just great. Not one word to me about it. Joe, curb the resentment. All right, here's one of the men you're after, Podesta. Well, this may or may not be his knife, sir. But Podesta's one of my men. One of your men. He probably was looking for these. We found some in the other groups. No danger from them until the firing pin hits him. And then, just enough explosion to blow up the gun. You slip one of these in an ammo belt here and there, and pretty soon you get gunners afraid to pull the triggers. That's their mission. Destroy our faith in production, maintenance, equipment. I'm sorry. I'm not going to have my men go up with this thing on their backs tomorrow. Dave, I want you to call General Britt. I want you to recommend that he scrub us out of this mission tomorrow. Is that what you want? Yes. That's what they want. Slow us down, keep bombers on the ground. Well, I'm not going to take my men up unless I can tell them about this. We can't have airplanes blowing up in our faces. We can get rid of these, sir, before you take off, if you have any aboard. If, if, if. Well, if I call division right now, I'll have myself scrubbed. Colonel. I hate to pull rank on you. We've known each other too long. But if you tip this now and we lose, I will rack you to the end of my days. Now you fly tomorrow. You say nothing to anyone and you fly like all the rest. Yes, sir. Sergeant, are you sure that nobody else knows what happened? Well, yes, sir. I called these two to help. I woke Doc Kaiser. He called the nurse. That's all. Apparently, the pressures of this maintenance problem, and maybe it came to a head in that beef you had with him, Sergeant, and the Colonel had been writing him, I know. 
Anyhow, Doc Kaiser's confirmed it as a suicide, and I think we'd better all agree to keep it quiet for the moment. So, what was he doing in the armor's room? He opened the ammunition. Well, I'm not a psychiatrist, Sergeant. I guess he first had some ideas of vengeance. Is General Creighton still here? Yes, he's in with the Colonel. But I don't understand it, Dave. You've said you've narrowed things down. Now, why don't you start making some arrests? I've got 17 of the beggars dead to rights, and my teeth ache to chomp down. But I still don't know how they get their orders, and I'm still not certain who in your group to go after. Making arrests now would only warn them, and I'd lose them. And they'd hit us somewhere else. It's the old, old story. Grab them all. Wait. Roll with the punches. Keep them thinking we believe Podesta killed himself. Give us a chance to bait some kind of a trap. Dave, I want to tell you something. I wouldn't have your job for anything in the world. You better get some rest. You got a briefing in three hours. A briefing? You talk to Britt? Does he still want us to fly this mission? I did, and he does. Major Stoball, Private Kamansky, come in here, will you? At ease. Now, I want you men to know the truth about something. Colonel, I ordered you... General, I'm sorry. I know you know your business and I don't mean to interfere, but if I can't trust these two, then the whole ball game is over. I want you to know that Major Adams here is a counterintelligence officer. Sergeant Podesta was one of his men, and Sergeant Podesta was murdered by Nazi saboteurs. Murdered? Yes, that's correct. But for the time being, let's just keep the suicide story going. Now, Harvey, Major Adams is going to take Sergeant Podesta's place. We'll need a sergeant uniform for the Major. Most important, I want you two to make sure you keep your mouth shut. Okay, that's it. obedient. Well, what a pleasant surprise. Surprise? You asked me to be here when you came back. That's right, I did, didn't I? Would you like some coffee? I'd love some, thank you. Did it go well today? Yes. How else could it? You wished me good luck, didn't you? Actually, we lost one airplane. Another. I'm sorry. This was different. The fighters got him. That's an honest hazard. At least he had a chance to fight back. Can you sleep now? Oh, I'd love to. But I have a whole day's paperwork ahead. Hey, this is good coffee. Of course, I made it. I leave you now, Colonel. Ilka, I want to thank you for being here. You had forgotten you asked me. No, not really. You see, it was very important to me at the time. But I guess with the mission and such, I... Oh, it just slipped my mind. I knew it was important to you. I was here. I think because I wondered why. Occupational seizure. See, most of us never think about not coming back. But, uh, well, every once in a while you get the feeling that maybe this time you won't. And that's when it's rather comforting to know that somebody, somebody special is here waiting for you. Thank you. Yes? Colonel, Captain Zola would like to see you. Uh, Harvey, have him wait a minute, will you? I'm afraid uh, Captain Zola's a bit upset with me. They don't let me tell him very much. He told me. We had coffee together. Oh? Well, I'm surprised my officers allowed you enough free time to see him. <laughs> They've been very attentive. I see. Well, has anyone shown you around the ammunition dump yet? I've been saving that for you. Tonight? Tonight. Captain Zola? Colonel Gallagher, I wish to... You're here. So it is true. What's true? I understand the secret mission has been ordered. A secret mission? 
Well, that's just a natural assumption for my men to make. You see, I restricted the base. Colonel Gallagher, I fear that I'm being slighted somewhat. Slighted? I don't think so. Information about Polish affairs seem to be withheld from me. I think my duties with this group consist of coordinating... Captain, I have no information about Polish affairs. You're going to fly Ica to Poland, are you not? Am I? If so, I don't know about it. Colonel, please. You order a counterintelligence major onto the base. You double the security. I think it is obvious that... Captain, I was ordered to protect this lady. I'm taking steps to do just that. Now, if there's any other information that you need, I'm sure you can get it through normal channels. Excuse me, sir. I have the strike folders. Put them on the desk, Harvey. Yes, sir. Excuse me? Captain, we must go. The colonel is very busy. Colonel Gallagher, my concern is for this woman. She's very important to us. To us all. Bobby, I think... Major Adams is posing as Master Sergeant Young, isn't he? That's right. Well, Captain Zola knows we have a counterintelligence major here on the base. Now, as far as I can remember, there'd be no normal way of him finding this out. Colonel Gallagher, put me through to General Creighton, will you? I think he's at Wing Headquarters. And scramble it. Yes, Captain Zoller. Oh, yes, sir. Captain, we've been ordered to try again to get Ilkers Radner to the continent. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you for telling me. She'll take off in the evening, late afternoon, in time to reach her destination at 2100. What is the destination? That I've not been told. Thank you. Welcome, Captain. Davis, there's some other way we can do this without actually involving her. I've got to gamble now that she's important enough to make them expose themselves. But don't you understand? You're betting her life. Now, they've already murdered three people. Hertz, Langer, Podesta. Anybody ever promise you the Nazis would fight with kid gloves? Or that we would, for that matter? No. And I don't mind a street fight either, but this is worse. This is knives in the back. And you're spoon-feeding me the full responsibility. Isn't that where it belongs? No matter how you slice it, if Zola knows Adams is a CIC major, that puts him on their side. Only a half dozen people could have told him. They're all people you thought you could trust. Well, I don't say Zola's your fault. You've been wary of him. His pre-war political record was lousy. Well, the whole thing is lousy. I'm sick of it. Call your base. Start getting a plane ready. Colonel Gallagher, give me the 918th operations and scramble it. Joe, no. But don't scramble it. Get me Captain Nysmith, CIC. Hello, Harvey. This is Joe. I want you to get a B-17 ready for a special mission tomorrow. I don't know. Heartless Hannah's in pretty good shape. Captain? Right. General Creighton. Midnight tonight. Start pulling the string on the 17 saboteurs we know about. Am I on time? Oh, yes, I am. Uh... You carry this on a dinner date? Hey, okay, come in. I, I want to talk to you. Ilka. Ilka, we won't be going to dinner tonight. Why, Joe? Captain Zola is willing to kill you rather than let you get into Poland. He and some of his friends have already tried. That airplane you were flying in, it was sabotaged. And that's why I have to... Joe, please don't do this. But don't you understand? They're after me and my airplanes. And they're after you. I don't know who the others are, but I do know about Zoller. And if I can't convince Dave Creighton that he has to stop him Dave now... Creighton is a friend of mine. And he is yours. I know that. He's a very brilliant man, and so is his whole organization. But you know what they have planned for you tomorrow? They're going to use you as bait. I know it. You know. Dave Creighton has told me that, Joe. 
please let me talk to you. Talk? Ilka, they've been doing nothing but talk to me for the past two days. They even have me half convinced that I have to expose my own men to this. But there's no way they can convince me that it's, that it's moral or excusable to jeopardize your life. Why? May I not have my duty the same as you do? But you're a woman. I like you. As a woman. And just that. Ilka, this is a lot dirtier war than I ever thought it would be. When spies and saboteurs can spoil or, or even threaten what you are. But I am a spy. And I am a saboteur. Yes, I'm on the same side with you. But tell me, where is the difference? I don't know. I guess maybe in what you believe. And what I do is of my own choice. And my people and my country are my reason. Joe, I'm here and my enemies are here. And they will try and stop me some other way. Even kill me. I am safer if you take me than if you don't. I'm safer and so are you. Here, Poland, anywhere. If tomorrow I'm the bait and we succeed. Do you want me to tell you what I've noticed? When you speak of an airplane that was fighting, you say he, he fought, he went down. When you speak of an airplane that is helpless, alone, you say she. It's very tender. She is for uh, affection, he for respect, she for nature, he for God. Someday I think we shall meet somewhere and talk about something else. Not war anymore. And you're telling me to look ahead, to take today for what it is and forget it and look ahead. Yes. To someday when the good is good again and there is beauty. Luca, why do you do this? Why do you live this way? Maybe for the same reason you wanted to go for Captain Sola, Joe. It's easier. Joe, it's easier to do than to wait. is you're going to be later. I've been waiting for you. Waiting for me? What for? Because you were on guard duty the night before the 262 went down. And you've been someplace since the CIC would like to ask you about. Oh, come on, Tibby, huh? Just freeze. Get 
on that checklist. I'll be right back. Yes, sir. Go forward, dear. I'll be right with you. Anything, Major? Nobody but your ground crew's been near the plane, sir. I guess it won't work. But will if they want to stop us. This is the place they have to come. Let's go forward. Hey, Clem, old buddy. You almost ran off without your coffee. Oh, thank you. Thank you. In. Who was that gun at? Pearson. He brought the coffee. Him or Hanson usually do. Hanson? Well, that must be it. Don't open that. Soldier, give me that piece. They got Hanson and Captain Zola. Hanson was on guard duty that night. That connected him with Captain Zola. Sergeant Podesta's funeral is tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Take him out of here. Sir, Hanson and Pearson always brought us coffee. How come you don't want to open this? I'll show you why. Let's go behind the Jeep. I hope that means a safe landing for you. It's good coffee. Of course, I made it. Sir, 15 seconds to drop zone. It seems we never get beyond coffee together. Someday we shall. I believe that. It's a bad war, but a good world, Joe. Long Bay doors opening, five second countdown, sir. Right. Something better than coffee, with you. Joe, how do you like your coffee in the morning? What? How do you like your coffee in the morning? Mm -hmm. 